to really nurture side projects and things that you want to blossom into something is you, you have to give it time to grow. What's going on? You're listening to episode 37 of the Perspective Podcast, and I'm your host, Scotty Russell of Perspective Collective. This show is just a weekly push for you to make time to pursue work that's important to you. I also want it to serve as a little boost to get you through those creative funks that we all deal with. This week on the show, we have a very special guest who just got done hosting an amazing conference called Crop in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Matt Dawson is a talented designer and connector who creates under the name Stay Gray Pony Boy in Atlanta. He is a shining example of someone who put in the work and used the power of side projects to build a name for himself. He's not only an insanely talented individual, but he's grown into becoming a really good friend of mine and I can't wait to share his story with you. You can find all of his information and all the people and places that we reference in the show notes at perspective-collective.com slash 37. All right, Maddie, Matt, Maddie Ice, what's going on, dude? Great to have you on the show finally. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm happy to be here. Uh, how are you? I'm doing all right. Still coming down from the high that is crop conference. So have you come down at all yet? I'm in the same boat, man. It's kind of like we've we've just been we we recap every day still. We're just like, oh, man, remember this? And like, oh, I can't believe when that happened. So we're just I don't know. we're, We're constantly talking about it. It's still very fresh on the brain. What would you say was probably the biggest highlight for you? Um, man. You know, like, unfortunately, they they kind of, the whole experience blurs for me, you know, because there's so much going on. But I I feel like the highlight for me this year was honestly kind of going back and, like, checking out everybody's social media posts Mm -hmm. and, like, really kind of feeling the love this year that, you know, people were maybe a little skeptical of last year. And, like, this year, it's just, like, you know, just reading people's stories and things that they were saying, we're just like, holy crap, man, like, that's, that's amazing. Like, we really reached some people and, you know, some people really dig what we're doing. So I I think, I think recapping, um, stalking on social media has been, has been a highlight. Yeah, people were definitely utilizing those hashtags. So I've, I've been hearing great feedback about the conference. That's awesome, man. I'm glad to hear it. Well, I want to have you on the show because obviously you're not only a stellar graphic designer, but I think you got a pretty kick-ass story. Uh, I think you have a lot of valuable insight for organizing such like a big thing such as a conference and working with lots of bigger names back and forth. And I, I think you provide a lot of value to my audience. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself, who you are, and how you got into art and design anyway to where you are today? Well, um, yeah, I'm, I'm from Louisiana, born and raised, uh, I was from a small town and, um, grew up there, uh, kind of, kind of similar to you. Uh, I, kind of split the, I kind of split the difference between being into artsy stuff and playing sports, you know, like I, I, I would always draw and, you know, draw like my favorite sports heroes like Shaquille O'Neal or like you know Ken Griffey Jr and then I would go you know and go play baseball as well so like I I kind of I kind of did both um towards high school I started gravitating more towards art um and getting more into art and music which kind of led me into college and whenever I got to college I really didn't know what I wanted to do um I'd always I'd, I'd always been really into architecture um However, I was not the best math student and somehow in my, you know, naive 18 year old mind, I was like, well, maybe landscape architecture doesn't have to do as much math. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. (laughs) Um, (laughs) so, you know, I, I started, I started into that program and, um, spent three and a half years of a five year program in there. And like, I, I loved all the basic stuff. I loved all the theory and, uh, you know, the, the, the beginning art classes that you take in the first couple of years, but then once you got into like the, the, the bones of it, you know, I was like, ah, this isn't for me. It's not as artsy as I wanted it to be. Um, 
then I, I kind of started, you know, having, having thoughts to, you know, like, was I doing the right thing, which, you know, I, I don't think I was at the time, but it kind of led me to, um, led me to graphic design. Well, like it's, it's kind of weird how I got into design. Like, so whenever I was in landscape architecture, like I was, we were having to put together these pitches and proposals and I, it was really kind of my first, my first taste of like Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. And, you know, I, I'd, I'd been really digging those programs. And, um, at the same time, like at night I was, I was using those programs to make uh, band flyers cause I was, you know, I had the fortunate job in high, in college of uh, being in a band with four of my best friends, and um, I was kind of the resident graphic designer. Didn't really know what I was doing, you know, but making show posters and press kits and T-shirts and terrible, terrible websites, and uh, that that kind of you know that coupled with you know like me wanting to switch majors is kind of how I got into graphic design and. Yeah, being in a band was uh, pretty much the best job you could ask for in college, but there were definitely some um, definitely some party days back then when you when you when you play in a bar three nights a week. Um, <laughs> yeah, every week. Yeah. Well, Ariadna, I had a good talk with her, and she was telling me about the time where you kind of just called her up out of the blue, saying like, "Hey, you need to have like a serious talk and sit her down." And she was kind of scared that you know the conversation was going to go uh, a bad way. I thought that's a pretty funny story. You know, when yeah. you sat down and got really serious about graphic design. Right. Yeah. So, so during, you know, during that weird transition where I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do, like Ariadne and I had just begun dating. We've been together almost 14 years now. Damn. But, um, you know, we, we, we just, you know, we, we click and we're each other's best friends and that's kind of how it was from the very start, you know? So, Whenever I sat down and like wanted to talk to her, it probably sounded a little more serious than it was, <laughs> and I think I scared her a little bit because she thought I was like, "Hey, we need to talk. <laughs> we're we're about to break up or something." But it was really just kind of wanting to get her advice on, you know, like, "Hey, I'm about to have this life change, or I'm going to switch majors. I've I've spent you know money and time invested in this one program, and I really want to switch over." And as soon as she realized that I wasn't breaking up with her, she was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. She was like, wait, you, you haven't been doing graphic design this whole time? And I was like, well, that, I guess I kind of have been, but I didn't really know I was doing it at the time. Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh, well, that's that's what I thought you were. <laughs> that's what I thought you were into. So maybe maybe she had a little a little better foresight into my future than I did. Well, it sounded like you kind of just stumbled into it and you obviously made the right decision so where did the name stay gray pony boy or where did you come up with studio gray where I, I i've been dying to know yeah it's 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 only we've only been using that for the past you know four four and a half years really um i i just i never i never liked the idea of um matt dawson design or you know dawson design oh group my or, god i'm so with you scotty russell yeah. graphics and scotty russell studio yeah. was like the douchiest thing in the world so yes i totally totally get you absolutely you know so like i th throughout college I, I had called my i'm doing air quotes which the people listening won't be able to see but um i had called my design business different things and um by the time i really kind of got serious about it um, as far as like wanting to legitimately make it a thing and push it forward and grow it, um, was around the same time that we were having our, our, um, our daughter and, you know, gray is a family name and, you know, as, as cheesy as this sounds like every, everything we, we did from that point on realizing we were going to be parents was for her. So I kind of felt it was natural to name our business, um, you know, kind of after that. And it's also my favorite color, which, or maybe it's not a color. I don't know. People, <laughs> I, I love gray. I love gray days whenever it's kind of overcast outside, gray shirts, pants, all that good stuff. Um, so, you know, like it, it just kind of, it just kind of fell into, you know, just fell into our minds like, oh, Studio Gray. But then the, the perils of trying to find a URL for something that simple they had all been taken. So we had a, we had a, um, brainstorming session one night with a bunch of terrible URL ideas. And, um, 
you know, somehow stay gray pony boy kind of, kind of got tossed out there. Uh, it's from the, the book, the outsider stay gold pony boy, mm-hmm. which was a required reading back whenever we were, we were young and in middle school, I think. And, um, I, I like the I like the idea of um, you know stay gray like the color theory behind gray is like neutral and you're able to you know kind of hear and see all sides of things um, and I, I really like that idea instead of being so like one sided so we're like oh, yeah I kind of like the idea of stay gray and then really love the idea of pony boy being tacked on and that has since become my online moniker much like perspective collective for you well i guess so after college how did you land a uh, how did it go about landing a job for me it was really really hard getting a job in graphic design but i'm in a smaller area so i didn't know if you had to move but i know today you are doing your thing full time as studio gray so how mm-hmm. did the whole transition phase go of doing the day job trying to balance some type of freelance into you know, finally taking everything, taking the risk and doing your thing full time. Cause you know, this is something I strive to get. And I know a lot of people and my listeners are also working towards. Sure. Well, I think, you know, I think a side business has kind of always been in the cards. Um, I, I lucked out graduating from college that, that I was fortunate enough to, to get a job as soon as I graduated. Um, and you know, had a few jobs since then in side projects and, a a side design business like they were always ongoing but it was never you know it was never anything other than to kind of keep me to kind of keep me going and moving forward it wasn't like hey i really want to grow this into a business until about you know five years ago or so and that's kind of whenever i really wanted to start building up clients taking on wider you know wider scoped projects and um you know, it was, it was kind of, it, it was just tough to balance, man. Um, like working full time, uh, whenever I did finally go out on my own, I was, I was working 50 hours a week for a small agency, um, coming home and working another 30 to 40 hours a week on nights and weekends. And it just kind of, it got, it got to a point where, you know, one thing starts to outweigh the other. Um, and you, you kind of have to make a choice like, well, am I going to, am I going to build something for myself or, you know, continue building something for somebody else, which is perfectly fine as well. But I'm just kind of at the age, you know, I'm 35, you know, I've, I've been, I've been working for other people for 11, 11 plus years now. Um, you know, you kind of, you, you, you start to want ownership of something and, um, you know, like it, the scale started tipping in my favor to where I was like, you know what? I, I really think if I put my head down, I can, I can do this and, you know, make a life out of it. And I, I I've, <laughs> I've literally been, um, on my own now for a month or a little over a month, about, about six weeks now. That's it. Yeah, that's it. But, really? You know, well, you'd, you'd never know because I was always hustling so yeah. so much the past few years. You know, I was really fortunate to have a job that embraced everything I did outside of the office because they they viewed it as like, man, Matt's a, Matt's a hustler. Mm-hmm. Matt is well, and it's helping your really, skills probably at the job too. You're bringing in fresh new perspective, fresh new design techniques, et cetera. Right, and like that was you know that was that was really awesome to have because. You know, like it's great when someone respects like what you're trying to do and, you know, respects your work ethic. And then I, I was also at a place where they absolutely hated that I that I did anything outside, which, you know, just kind of rubs me the wrong way because like I don't I don't view creatives as glasses that get filled and emptied. You know, like I kind of view us more as wheels that either keep moving forward or stop. Um, but Damn. I think I think their mindset was well, if you're, if you're doing all this stuff on nights and weekends, like how can you bring your a game the next day? And I'm just, you know, that didn't, that just didn't sit well with me because, you know, like I, I try to bring my a game anytime, you know, like anywhere and everywhere. And I tried to explain the whole thing. It's like, you know, I'm not being depleted working nights and weekends. I might be a little tired, but I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly evolving by doing this stuff. 
and I'm pushing myself and not stagnating. Um, the person I was with just didn't really, wasn't on board with that. And I, I, I can't really be somewhere where, you know, my life is trying to be controlled outside of the office as well. Dude, congrats, man. I had no idea it was that recent from the grind that you've obviously been putting out because you are one of the most consistent people I know. I've been thinking you've been doing your own thing for a while now. So, but Thanks. perception is everything. Right. Well, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's been a work in pro it's been a work in progress, you know, like all, all the stuff that you see, like whenever you and I became friends a couple of years ago, you know, like the stuff you were seeing is it's all my nights and weekends work, you know, it's, it finally built to something. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. congrats. That's a, that's awesome. That gives me uh, some hope because I'm, I'm grinding. The day job is supportive, but you know, I'm, I'm waiting for that day to tip the scale. So obviously your side project has turned into your day job. You have a couple other side projects and where did something like Type Combo Tuesday, if you don't know about that, go check out Stay Gray Pony Boys uh, Instagram account, Type Combo Tuesday. Every week he has some dope ass pairing of two random typefaces. So is this just something that you did for you or where did this come from? Because it just shows the power of a side project. And I feel, you know, that's something people have grown to look forward to because you're so consistent. You set a date and people know what to expect. Absolutely. And like that's, that's exactly what it is. I wanted to, I wanted to give something for people to expect and look forward to each week. Um, for the longest time, like a, a few years ago, we quit all social media, um, Ariadna and I. And, you know, then I kind of started peeking into Instagram and I was like, actually, you know what, I, I think I kind of like Instagram because it was all the, it was all the stuff that, you know, it, it's like the best part of Facebook. It was just pictures and comments. It wasn't whatever kind of rants or invitations to play farm bill or whatever Shitty news feeds yeah. with people boasting or complaining about everything negative yeah. in their life. Yeah. It was just like a bullshit free, like visual, you know, like little, you know, aggregate where you could go and do all sorts of cool stuff, be it photography or design. And I was like, okay, well, if I'm going to, if I'm going to join it, I want to have something consistent to put out because at the time, you know, projects were kind of few and far between, uh, I'm a, I'm a huge typography nerd. And at the time I was doing these talks where I would go and, um, you know, brief people on like the history of typography, give them like refresher courses and then kind of like, uh, recommend what works in practical settings. And, um, a big question I always got was, you know, like, well, how do you pick which typefaces go well together, which is kind of subjective. But, um, you know, during, during those talks, I, I started, I started making suggested pairings like a, you know, like a, like a wine yeah, connoisseur or something. Wine and cheese. Right. Um, so, you know, I was like, well, okay, this is maybe something consistent I can do because I, I had a bunch of them like already in my back pocket that I had done. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to start doing these every Tuesday. I, I came up with a hashtag that sounded good, or at least to me. And, um, you know, it, it gave me something consistent to put out on my Instagram page, which, you know, like, I had nobody knew who the hell I was, like a few friends and family. Um, but it gave, it gave me a way to uh, connect with new people. And like you said, give them something to look forward to. How long have you been doing type combo Tuesday? Um, I did it two years straight, uh, every week. So, you know, that was, <laughs> that's a lot of, that's a lot of type combos. Um, and honestly, like it, it, it gets kind of taxing, um, so what I started doing in 2017 is just doing them once a month. Um, but I feel like it kind of gives me a better chance to make more informed, um, combinations. Cause sometimes it, man, it, it'd be Tuesday night. We'd be, I'd be in the kitchen cooking. And I'd be like, Oh shit, it's Tuesday. All right. And I got to go do a type combo. And I'd hand her the spatula, run into the office and, um, crank out a, crank out a combination. But, um, I think doing it every month now helps me breathe a little easier and uh, juggle juggle the rest of the things that I have going on. That's insane, man. I just started uh, – <laughs> honestly, it's kind of you and Tad Carpenter both kind of inspired me with his Sunday Sun. And oh, man, I love your, this Sunday Your sun. Type Condo Tuesday, so I just started a Fresh Slice Friday on my, my yeah, Pizza Drawings Only right. account. So Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, damn, I need to be more consistent on this account. Like, I have so many ideas blowing up in my head, but now I can just channel them all and be consistent on one place. And yeah, so thank you for thank you for that. I had to give you a little plug. No, I love it, man. Is it uh, so? You're you're calling it Fresh Slice Friday? Fresh Slice Friday. 
I love that, man. I'm, I'm going to... It's the I'm gonna only name that popped that. in my head. I slept on it. I told Emily I was going to do it. Went out the next day, announced it, and now I don't know if I regret it or not, but I'm just going to roll with it. So just another thing to add to the list of all the yeah. shit I'm already trying to keep up with. So. And you, you, have, you have your own account for that? Is that right? Yeah, pizza you, drawings okay. only. Pizza drawings only. I need to... Um, Stupid. Yeah. I know, but man. No, I love it. It's great. All right, so where did crop come from? I'm talking about side projects here, you know, you, yeah. everything's house under Studio Gray, you know, that's your main channel, but now you have all these different mediums to kind of promote your voice through. Sure. Um, you know, And like the it, name crop. Yeah, uh, yeah, the name crop, I get that a lot. Um, so I mean, the, the idea kind of came from those, uh, those talks that I was just now um, talking about. I, I worked for Lamar Advertising down in Louisiana, and okay. they, they would have these creative camps um, where everybody would get together from across the states. It'd be like 110, 120 designers that are sitting there doing billboards, you know, five days of the week. And you know, it's it's it was so cool to see all those guys come together and like you know have share like a commonality and have like you know have this camaraderie be like, Oh man, like you're dealing with this too. Like, yeah, I am too. Like, I hate when that happens or like, Oh, I saw this and it was great. You know? So like celebrating each other's ups and downs. And, um, you know, I had, I had attended one of those creative retreats and then, um, you know, after, after I'd resigned from there a couple years later, they invited me down to speak at one and I I'd given one of those type talks and that was really, that was really whenever I was able to step away as like a spectator and like see how much these people were connecting and like what it meant to them to have this time together at, at the same time, you know, like the design scene in Louisiana was finally being recognized. You know, people were finally starting to, to care about design and people were getting into it and there's so much talent. And I was like, well, you know, maybe we can do this on a larger scale for, you know, everybody and not just internally for a company and that's kind of the idea of how how crop was formed and that was like basically the the seed that got planted to um to do it uh the name it's really tough it's it's tough to do two things it's tough to name a design conference and it's damn tough to design for a design conference um uh naming it we we had some we had some names that were hokey some that were or feel, you know, like the best representation of what we wanted to do. So again, another, another patio, uh, brainstorming session over beers kind of led us to the name crop and, and the idea that like when you're cropping something, be it, uh, be it a design or a photograph, like you're, you're trying to put focus on, you know, the best of the composition. Like you're trying to bring, bring things into frame you know, like at its, at its most pleasing whole. And, um, that's, that's where the name came from. The double entendre is that like, it also like brings people together and it, you know, like we were like, Hey, this actually isn't too bad. Like we, we like it. We tested it with a few people and they liked it. I guess with Louis Louisiana's agriculture, people always think it's something to do with like <laughs> sugar cane or something they're always like oh so is, is it because of the agriculture in louisiana i'm like nah not really but uh and i also get other questions on why it's called crop but that's that's not really for for up for discussion here um <laughs> but you know like we we like it and it's stuck and the the logo is one of the ones i'm most proud of um but again it was really nerve-wracking um designing for designers, you know, knowing that there's going to be 325 sets of eyes on this mark that you made and ripping your shit. Right. You know, so it was like really nerve wracking. Um, but luckily the name and the logo feel pretty solid now, or at least maybe I'm just used to it. Maybe that's it. So what was some of the hardest things learning and organizing crop for the first year? And then, you know, keep the momentum going your second year, second year with pulling some of the big names. Like last year you had, Draplin, Jason Craig are like some of the top ones that I came to mind. This year you had people like Lincoln Design Co., Morning Breath, Industry Print Shop. Uh, I don't know if I if I said Tad already, but yes, Tad and uh, Daniel Harrisy. 
Yeah. It, it was a, a stellar lineup, man. I couldn't believe I got to be a part of it all. Yeah, man, uh, dude, we were so happy to have you. Were, you were the very first person we booked for this year. No shit. Yeah, yeah. Cause, well, because like we had we had that we had that talk like a, a year or so ago, and um. Yeah, right after the Creative like, South talk. Yeah, and um, you know, Ari, I don't know, like we just took to you so well. It's like we were just all instant like buds, and I was like, you know, what? like I kind of I kind of love that guy. Like we should <laughs> we should get him, we should get him to to come do crop with us and bring that energy. Um, I mean the 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 hurdles of doing something like this, man. Like they they're honestly so many. Um. Like Ariadne and I were fortunate enough to have to have planned events for you know like ten plus years, whether they're Mardi Gras balls or you know like fundraisers, charity type stuff, um, and then with with um, you know me playing in bands down in Louisiana, you know like I had a lot of connections to like venue owners and bar owners and restaurants and this sort of thing. So all of that all of that was way easier than most people would think, especially since we were doing it from Atlanta. So like that that wasn't necessarily the biggest hurdle, but to me it was it was really just getting people to believe in it and kind of get on board with it. Um to kind of to kind of view us as the real deal because, you know, like we, we didn't start out small. Like we, and like maybe this was a gamble at the time, but like we, we kind of swung for the fences, you know, like we went for a venue that had a capacity of 325 people. We went for some of the biggest, you know, conference speakers around, you know, at the time, like with Aaron Draplin and, um, Hutzpah and uh, Steely, you know, like so, like we, we went for like big names, and you know, we we still had to convince other people, like, hey, you know, like we're we're legitimate, we're like we're definitely we're we're grinding over here. Um, you know, like we still have to do a lot of that this year, as far as like with sponsorships or like getting people to, you know, even even get interest in it. The amount of sponsors you guys had, man, that was nuts. Like asking you guys who who went and got all the sponsors, and it was just you two grinding like the whole year. So I can only yeah. imagine the time that went in all this. Yeah, you know, um, and and this year was you know this year was so this year was so much different than last year. I feel like this year we had, you know, uh, diversity comes in all shapes, forms, and sizes, and I, I feel like this year like our diversity was in our talks themselves. You know, like, and that was one thing that we really wanted to achieve from last year is we wanted to give people a wider, a wider range of um, artist stories. Uh, and I think that's kind of, I think we nailed it this year with, um, you know, with having so many different types of stories, like instead of a portfolio you know, review, a portfolio review or a, or a quit your job and be a, be a rock star, you know, like that, that kind of stuff, like, which is great. And like, I, I love that stuff. Like I eat it up. Like that's why I listen to podcasts with, you know, a lot of those stories. But this year I felt like we had a more pragmatic and practical, um, range of speakers. And I, I feel like it showed, you know, Ariana's played a huge role in all this stuff. You know, I, I know for me, one of my struggles over the last couple of years is showing the value of me pursuing Perspective Collective, the side project. It always wasn't there from the support of, you know, my, my wife at the time, you know, why don't you do a safe job, this and that. But now she's on board full time. Can you talk mm -hmm. about how important it is to have your spouse or significant other, you know, kind of share your same vision, be on board uh, with with where you're trying to take your dreams, take your passion, take your goals. Yeah. I mean, that, that is like extremely important, you know? Um, and I've, was that always the know, case or did you guys ever have some tension in there? It's, it's kind of always been the case, man. Like Ariadna has always been so supportive of anything, like, like whether or not it was from that first conversation where we first started dating, Hey, I want to switch majors. Well, yeah, you should do that. Is that going to make you happy? Is that like what you feel is the right thing? And I mean, that was 14 years ago and you know, like that, that hasn't really wavered. She's always been incredibly supportive. Um, she's seen me through all my ups and downs. She's seen me at jobs that literally just worked me to the bone and just kind of came home defeated. And, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I hustled for so long, um, you know, that like, it, like any kind of level that I've, 
any kind of level of success that I've achieved has really only been in the past like two or three years. You know, like I, I had eight plus years before that of like just getting beat down with, you know, like your day to day job and like the type of work you were doing, the type of projects you were doing, the people that you were dealing with. Um, and she's always been right there for me as far as, you know, well, how do we make this better for you? You know, like never, never once was it like, well, it's a really good paycheck and we need this kind of thing. Cause like, we're always going to get by one way or another, you know, like if, if you can get by and be happy, then you need to try to figure out how the hell you can do that. And I feel like we, we finally have figured that out. Yeah. That's the shit. It seems like you guys got a lot of momentum in, uh, if, if people want to find her, she's at stay gray pony girl. Is that a newer account yeah. now? Yeah. 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 She, she does. She just hopped on the Instagram game and, um, you know, like she, like, again, like she's so supportive, like she loves design, you know, like she graduated in sculpture, but I think with me, like if, if you're in a relationship with me, you're kind of going to have design forced on you, but mm-hmm. she, she, she openly accepts it. You know, she goes to the conferences with me, she stays up and plans stuff with me. I mean, she, she hustles just as much for crop. Yeah. Than I do. Man, she was um, all over the place. Yeah. And I mean, she's, she's like, like I, I forget which brain is which, like left brain or right brain, but we're, we're, we're the opposite. So like we, we fit really well together whenever it's, um, you know, it comes to like planning and organizing and working together. It's like, it clicks. Hell yeah. Well, where do you both see crop in the future? I know you kind of have some things coming up soon. Well, not relatively soon, but kind of soon. It'll be a lot sooner than we, than we imagined. Yeah. I'll let you share the news. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, th- this was, uh, last week, uh, this, this April was our, was our second ever crop. Um, it was again, uh, to a sold out crowd, which still just blows my mind. 325, 325, incredibly thankful for that. Um, you know, we're, we're already planning crop 2018, um, which will be in Baton Rouge again. Um, but we announced this year that we're also going to start doing a satellite event in between, you know, the, the main crops. Um, so, you know, Every spring we'll have crop in Louisiana, but every fall, starting this fall, we're going to have what's called a pop-up crop, and it'll be a single-day event, um, similar programming to crop, you know, some workshops, some speakers, and a party, and we're gonna we're gonna bring it to different cities across the U.S. Like this year, it's in Austin, Texas, and um, it's going to be held uh, with and at Industry Print Shop. Hell yeah industry is those dudes are awesome they're literally the best business he is the man like he's got he's got such a such a big heart and such a solid crew behind him he's the most generous dude i think i've ever been around he he really is man like we like we you know we we couldn't do we couldn't do crop without him um so we're, we're really excited to bring the first satellite event there and um yeah i gotta gotta get that site built out in the next month and hopefully hopefully we'll announce the lineup which is pretty much done hopefully we'll announce that in june and you know see see where that takes us cool yeah Yeah. good for you man hoping to make it down there that that would be awesome especially if it's one day that's that's pretty manageable and we got family in austin and what's mondo cons right after that too yeah so um it's gonna be i don't have my phone on me but um it's going to be the weekend of MondoCon, uh, and MondoCon is this incredible poster show down in Austin where artists from all over the world come and do these crazy ass variant posters of like bands, movies, TV shows. It's like, you know, you need to go expecting to come away broke because you're going to want to buy everything. Um, so we're, we're going to be on the Friday of that. Um, so we'll have a full day Friday at industry and then, um, party it up that night and then you know probably probably head over to MondoCon the next day and check it out and austin's so much fun in general it's it's not a tough sell definitely well i think what you're doing right now is just absolutely awesome it's pretty inspiring especially you know you you've put in your time grinding did the day jobs you know worked your ass to the bone just to see where you are right now it's pretty i'm not gonna lie it's pretty fucking amazing and it's very proud to have you as my friend to have you on the show well, one thing that I know a lot of people in my audience struggle with is what's one piece of advice that you could give to creative starting a side project or, you know, sticking through it when you're going through some type of creative funk? 
You know, I, I think it, I think it's just having patience, and like I'm I'm not a, I'm not a patient person, um, but to to really nurture side projects and things that you want to blossom into something is you you have to give it time to grow. Um, I think you said during your talk um, at Crop last week, you know, like don't don't compare your start to someone else's middle, and like that, that that's exactly what it is. You know, like you you can't like you can't compare yourself to somebody else that has achieved these accolades and these these levels of various successes and kind of get down on yourself because you haven't got that yet. You you got to put in that time and you've got to. You've got to have the patience, and you've got to you've got to allow it to grow and stick with it. You know, like I, I've I've abandoned tons of side projects and different endeavors, and like I always regret it. You know, I'm like, man, that that could have been really cool if I just wouldn't have been such like a stubborn, you know, you know, whatever. But um, I think giving things time to grow, and you know, really really seeing ahead, looking ahead to what it's going to accomplish for you. And what it's going to help you achieve, like that's that's the carrot, and like that's what you need to keep chasing. Word, that's great. That honestly, that that's the new intro for the uh, your episode when it comes out. So I'll be using that. <laughs> All right, that's probably the title too. Right on. We're gonna kind of do some quick rapid fire questions as we uh, okay kind of go into conclusion of this. So sure, serif, sans serif, or script. What's your go to? Uh, sans serif all the way. Sans serif all the way. Any reason why? Yeah. Clean and modern? Clean and modern, I think. Yeah. All right. Well, um, well why'd I, you go can... script with crop logo then? Uh, to Well, because... It's you know, not about I, you? I, 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 because I realized it wasn't about me, honestly. If, if I showed you the artboard for crop, um, you'd see all sorts of stuff that probably wouldn't jive with a lot of people. But um, I think yeah, that would so... look really cool to put in the show notes if you want to yeah. screenshot that and send it to my way. Maybe so. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll poke around and see. Some of it's really embarrassing, too. <laughs> That's good though, man. It makes you a human. Yeah. All right. Well then who's your current favorite artist or someone that you're really vibing to lately? Designer, illustrator, lettering artist, photographer, doesn't matter. Um, there's this there's this guy in Atlanta. I feel like I'm gonna butcher his last name. Um, he's not super big on social media or anything, but his name's Alvin Deek. Um it's Alvin and then it's D I E C. And um he's he's got this He's got just like this amazing style of you know capitalizing on like the 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 newfound popularity to make things look old, but his doesn't look old. Like, I mean, like his his doesn't look forced. His looks like legitimately vintage or retro, and um, it like his his style and work is just killer. Like he's he's kind of nailed that vibe without making it look so. I'll have to check him out and find a way to link him up in the show notes for other people to find him. Yeah, right, he's here, great. Here's the most important question. You knew this one was coming. What's mm -hmm. your favorite type or kind of pizza? Yeah, I, I, I've been thinking about this one, and I almost ordered it last night. Um, favorite kind of pizza is um, pepperoni, mushroom, feta cheese, and banana peppers. You make it to yourself, or do you get it from somewhere? I, I get it from this place um, around the corner from us. Like, So we, we've got these kind of... I, Maybe it's a mellow mushroom knockoff. Maybe it's not, but it's called Peace Love and Pizza. It's another super hippied out pizza joint. Um, mellow mushroom. That place is yeah. hilarious. Yeah, it it's really like is. my it's kind a, of pizza joint, man. <laughs> yeah, and and this this place is basically kind of like it's basically a carbon copy of it as far as like the the cutesy names and like you know all the all the psychedelic shit on the walls. But um, yeah, they they make a pizza that that has those ingredients, and man, I, I can eat an entire can eat an entire pie by myself that's in atlanta yeah yeah I, th I think i think they're all over like the the um southeast but uh yeah we, we've got one we've got one not far from our house in georgia right on man well it's been a pleasure where can people go to find you online um well like you said earlier uh my, my main outlet from keeping up up to date with me is instagram you can find me at stay gray pony boy um, likewise, if you want to go visit my super old and outdated site, it's staygrayponyboy.com. And if you want to get involved or learn how you can attend and get more in the know on crop, you can go to cropbr.com. And, um, 
yeah, that's that's my that's my main three outlets. Anyway, yeah, I highly recommend you check out Matt's Instagram. That thing, especially his thirty six days of type, like you blew it away, man. So experimental. That was, that was brutal, man. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you, you pushed through. You kicked him out, man. Yeah. You made some amazing different experimental <laughs> pieces. Your type combo Tuesday. Um, your client work too. You do a lot of branding projects that are awesome to look at too. So I highly recommend you check out this guy's account. Matt, you got anything else to say? Oh man, I, I just I appreciate getting to have another conversation with you and just getting to getting to hang out. Like crop was such a blur. It's it's great to like focus on like just us and get this time together, man. I'm I'm really thankful. Well, it's been awesome having you on the show. Seriously, it's a blessing. It's an honor, and just happy to call you my friend, man. Let's keep in touch so we don't wait until what October ish or whatever your crop yeah. pop up is. So let's keep in touch. Absolutely, man. All right, brother. Have a good one. Uh, you too, Scotty. I can't tell you enough how much I love interviewing and having people on the show, especially my friends who are making some big waves in the creative community. People like Matt Dawson, I can't say enough good things about. He's one of those type of people that you immediately just hit it off with right in the beginning. And I'm very blessed to call him my friend. I can't recommend enough that you should go check out Crop Conference. This place was magical it blew away every little expectation that i had very intimate setting awesome nightlife tons of great food tons of great speakers the workshop atmosphere just everything about it was awesome it's definitely in the top conferences i've been to can't recommend it enough so check that out over at crop br or crop conference just google that as well thanks so much for being on the show matt if you're getting any kind of value from this show all I ask is that you give it a share on social media. For real, that's been the key to this show growing is by people like you sharing it on Twitter or sharing something over on Instagram. You don't realize how big of an impact that makes for people discovering the show. And I can't thank you enough if you've taken the time to share, retweet, comment, whatever. And it really helps the show out. If you want to find me online, you can find me over at Instagram at the Perspective Podcast. I just need to give a huge thank you to Nick Jenkins of Bluka for all the theme music that you hear on this show. You can find him and more of his music online at SoundCloud.com slash Bluka. That's B-L-O-O-K-A-H. And as always, I need to thank you so much for spending time out of your existence, lending me your ears. There's so many other things in the world you could be doing right now and you're here with me and it means the world to me. I just want to encourage you to keep showing up, keep putting in the work, and keep creating. You got this.